Hello, my name is Jung Hee Lee from Hammam Church in Chuncheon. I always felt like I was only 98% satisfied. Whether it was appearance, personality, married life, or faith, I couldn't stop thinking that I was lacking. Even when I was happy, when I thought about that lacking 2%, I'd get really upset. It gave me an incredibly hard time. Then after completely surrendering to the risen Lord, I was able to find joy in all the words of God and become truly satisfied and happy. I'd like to share my story with you. It's not that I was unhappy about feeling dissatisfied since I was a child. I was actually an obedient child who never complained or gave her parents a hard time. I also studied hard. I was accepted into Chuncheon National University of Education, and I joined the dormitory run by Hammam Church. I grew up always being complimented that I was kind to others, but while I was living in the dorms, I saw my true personality surface. At first, I blamed myself whenever I had any conflict, but I began to think that I was always the victim. Then I started to hate the people who gave me a hard time. I would become annoyed at the relationships I couldn't control. And when there was a conflict with someone, I began to judge who was right and who was wrong. I became very angry when I felt wronged, and I'd only be satisfied after I got someone to talk to me about who was right and who was wrong. I eventually noticed that my life and faith weren't consistent. During sermons, I would listen, cry, and repent, and I felt like I was full of the Holy Spirit. But as soon as I had conflicts with people, it was incredibly difficult for me to keep calm. I got dejected at the fact that rather than changing, my life seemed even more sinful than before. My pastor kept talking about why people didn't change, and I felt so frustrated whenever I heard those sermons. Then the church began hearing about the resurrection, and more and more people surrendered their lives to the risen Jesus. As I saw these people's lives change, I grew concerned about my own faith. I wanted to surrender to the risen Lord completely too, not 90%, not even 99.9%, but 100% so that I could be changed. In the meantime, I became old enough to consider marriage. There was a man whom I had in mind. I liked him because he seemed kind and reliable. Also, he seemed likely to get along with the church community, so I married him. After getting married, time passed and I felt a void inside of me that I wanted to fill. The first thing I tried to fill the void with was a happy marriage. But my husband didn't act the way I wanted him to. On our anniversaries and my birthdays, I wanted my husband to make reservations at elegant restaurants or call me and confess his love to me. But he only managed to remember the dates. <laughs> the truth is, my husband isn't good at multitasking. But though I knew he was busy at the office, I still felt disappointed from his lack of care. He's not a talkative person, so whenever I wanted to have a conversation, I would ask him what he thought of something, and he would answer, yes. He didn't seem interested in anything I talked about, so I get annoyed and yell, this is not the kind of marriage I wanted. Also, he's never on time. He has no problems being late and doesn't care if others are late either. But I didn't like that, so I would start getting ready 30 minutes to an hour before we went out. But it was no use. He would do stretches in the middle of putting his socks on, and he'd roam around the house after every time he put on an article of clothing. <laughs> then I start nagging at him and get really annoyed. I really didn't like that habit. I began to get irritated by the smallest things, which led to fights. Eventually, the biggest issue in my life became fighting with my husband. But my husband has good traits, too. We've been married 11 years, and I have never taken out the trash. My husband always did it for me. And if I was too tired to do the dishes, he would do them for me after work. He never complained about my cooking, though I'm not a good cook. He is really diligent, and he tries his best for me. But I took all those qualities for granted because he didn't satisfy me 100%. My husband was perfect 98% of the time, However, I was a person who only saw the other 2%. That was me, and because of that, I never felt content. At first, my husband was patient with me, but eventually, he became as irritated as I was and started to show it. Then I would get even angrier and we would start shouting at each other. The fights escalated and got more frequent. The fight always started with something small, but we always ended up hurting each other with our words and actions. I often wondered if I was a problem in the relationship, but I never gave in. Then I began to wonder if our marriage would last. 
Plus, problems at work made life messier and more exhausting. Everything in life was making me more irritated and angry, and these feelings were getting out of control. At school, I got annoyed at my students because they didn't behave like model kids. <laughs> One time when I was teaching fourth grade, I repeatedly taught the same math concept for an hour, but the kids failed to understand. I got so frustrated that I said, Do you even know what one plus one is? Then the kids just looked at each other until someone said, Two? That drove me insane. <laughs> an impossible boss had made me really mad. Once I sat in front of my superior in an angry posture during a meeting, then I left without saying a word and went back to my classroom. One teacher was shocked at my behavior and tried to talk to me about it, and a colleague also expressed her concern for me. I didn't want to act like this, but it felt like irritation was pouring out of every part of me. Even at home, when I wasn't satisfied with my children, I would yell, Do you want to be spanked? I'm in a really bad mood right now. I couldn't say nice things to them at all. My children always tried to avoid me, and even my father became concerned and asked, Why are you always so cranky? I was in a bad mood from the moment I woke up until I went to bed. And being angry and irritated all the time was making my life miserable. I felt like I was going to explode if someone touched me. Then it happened, the tipping point, where I exploded into a thousand spectacular pieces. I was carpooling with a colleague. I had been carpooling with her for about four years. On that day, as usual, I was angrily complaining about what happened at work. Then, after listening to me for a while, my friend said, in a very sincere tone, that she really needed to tell me something. But she hesitated to tell me what it was for a while, and I knew that whatever it was, it wasn't going to be good. The moment was tense, but I pretended like everything was fine and told her, It's okay, go ahead, I'll be fine with anything you say. Even so, she was still hesitating. So to push her, I said, If you don't say it, I'll start imagining worse things than what you're actually thinking. Then she told me, Chongyi, you weren't always like this. But nowadays, I can't tell if you've changed or this is how you've always been, and I had just been wrong about you. The moment she finished, I started to cry. My friend got really flustered as she saw me cry. As I cried, I told her, No, this isn't me, and I don't know why I'm acting like this. But then, I suddenly felt as if God was telling me, This is the result of living however you wanted, as your own master. This thought put me into complete shock. The memories of all the hard times I had had came flooding back to me, and I knew that they were the result of not believing in Jesus as my Lord. I could clearly see how I had been acting as the Lord of my marriage, children, work, and everything else in my life. That was why life had been so hard. God had been trying to tell me that, but I hadn't listened. So he had let me experience it firsthand. My friend patted me on the back and comforted me. I told her, Thank you, thank you so much. God spoke to me through you. I've been my own master and not living according to God's word. Then she didn't know what to say because she wasn't a Christian then. <laughs> After that day, I really humbled myself before God. God saw my heart and He allowed the knowledge of the resurrection to become real to me. At the time, the church was focusing on the resurrection, and many people there were rejoicing as they confirmed that the resurrection was a historical fact. Since I'm a teacher, I couldn't deny that Jesus, one of the four great holy figures in history, had existed and that his resurrection, which was written about in the teacher's guidebook, was fact. Many church members were rejoicing with changed lives, having received Jesus as their Lord, after confirming that he was God through the resurrection. However, I was different. As I looked at their changed lives, I saw that I had nothing to do with the resurrection. You know yourself best. I thought God would acknowledge me if I was truly sincere. I thought that was the reason why he had let me enter the teacher's college. If you look in the Bible, the disciples had followed Jesus for three years with sincerity and love, and they had made confessions based on those things. In the same way, I believe that my sincere confession and heart towards God would solve all of my problems. I thought, I just need to do my best in front of God. But I noticed something odd. The disciples had all run away when Jesus had died on the cross. I thought, maybe it was just a temporary lapse. People make mistakes. They eventually did repent and come back to Jesus. It was because they couldn't help it. We all deny God at some point and think our efforts are enough. However, during service, as I listened to the sermon, 
I saw the difference between the disciples' confessions before and after the resurrection. Before they saw the resurrection, when Jesus asked, Who do you say I am? The disciples had answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And they had even said, Let us go die with him. But they had all denied Jesus when he died. They hadn't denied him because of their human weaknesses. They had denied him because they hadn't been sure about him. Later, the disciples saw sure proof, the resurrection, and were never shaken again. After they saw the risen Lord, the threat of torture and death didn't shake them at all, and they risked their life for the gospel. I realized the disciples must have seen the resurrection. It was real. They saw the risen Lord and were changed. And through their change, I was able to meet the risen Lord as well. Amen. Standing before the risen Jesus, I clearly saw why I had always felt like I was lacking in life. It was because I hadn't believed in Jesus and had been my own master. God has sent Jesus for a sinner like me. Jesus had fulfilled everything by dying for my sins and then rising from the dead. But I had pushed Jesus aside and had kept acting as a master of my own life. When I saw this sin, I couldn't help but repent. Forgive me. Forgive me. Father, I did not believe in Jesus as my Lord. Please forgive me. I couldn't say anything else as I cried in repentance. But God seemed to be telling me, It was for you. It was because I love you. Because I wanted to save you from the kind of life you had to live in such a dark world. That was why I died and rose from the dead to be your Lord. And within these words, I could see God's heart. That's when I finally understood why I had to repent and believe in the gospel. It was because of God's true love for me. Amen. At this love, I finally repented with my heart the sin of not believing in Jesus and confessed, Jesus is my Lord and my God. Amen. There was one thing that became clear to me after the resurrection confirmed to me that Jesus is God. It was that the key to life was to live according to God's word. I used to think that God's words didn't apply well to life in this world. But this twisted logic was given to me by this world. God's word was what was right. Every word of God was right. His words were what allowed me to live the best life in this world. Amen. I wondered how all the words in the Bible could be right, and the answer was clear, the resurrection. Amen. It was the resurrection. Through the resurrection, it was confirmed that Jesus is God, which meant that everything Jesus had said was true. God said that I was a sinner, so I was a sinner for sure. Since God said that this world was in darkness, I knew for sure that it was. I could say amen to this, not because my reasoning agreed with it, but because the risen Jesus had said so. I could finally see what perfect submission before the risen Jesus truly was. This act of saying Amen was etched into my heart through a praise song. One day, I was going to work. I was listening to praise songs created by my church in my car, and it was very graceful. Then one of the songs had these lyrics. That's right, that's right. I will glorify you with my Amen Amen, amen. The confession of the Lord's soldier is, Yes, sir, yes, sir. If it is your will, I will follow you with joy. It's a fast and powerful song, but I cried my eyes out while singing it. I confessed with my heart, Lord, your words are true. I'll say amen to everything you have said and will glorify you. If it's your will, I will say yes, sir. Thank you, Lord, for allowing me to obey you with such joy. My tears fell endlessly. I grabbed the steering wheel with one hand while I raised the other hand into the air and confessed with all my heart. I had never been satisfied and had always complained. But now, my heart became completely filled with when the word said, having nothing and yet possessing everything. I already possessed everything and I could enjoy that fact to the fullest. My pastor said that there were two things that would last for eternity, God's word and souls. He said that our souls could only be satisfied by the eternal words of God. And I just exclaimed, Oh, I see! At that moment, all the complaints and irritation I had held on to for so long completely disappeared. Amen. After this, I changed. I had wanted my husband to meet my standards. But God said, For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And I realized that my life with my husband was very temporary. But I had tortured my husband for my unquenchable satisfaction during this short life. I felt very sorry towards my husband as I thought about how hard it must have been for him. I now hold on to the verse, Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. 
I obey my husband in whatever circumstances, and I no longer argue about right and wrong. I don't feel angry about things that happen at school anymore either. During a meeting, the principal made negative comments about the work I had done, but I didn't feel upset at all. At the end of the meeting, my colleagues asked me, Are you okay? Only then did I realize that the situation might have called for anger. In the past, I would have been really angry. These days, I'm told, You're wonderful, Miss Lee. Your husband's lucky. I used to never be able to evangelize to others. Since I wasn't sure about the risen Jesus, I didn't know how to evangelize, and everything got so complicated in my head. But when I became certain that the resurrection of Jesus was real, I couldn't help but spread this good news. Amen. One day, I evangelized with my small church members on the bus. While sharing the gospel with an elderly woman, a drunken elderly man next to her kept scolding and discouraging me. It was severely distracting, and though I was on fire with the Holy Spirit, it made me want to cry. But after I got off the bus, my eight-year-old son told me, Mom, I really envy you because you were persecuted. When you're persecuted, your reward in heaven becomes bigger. I want to be persecuted too. And my husband gave me a thumbs-up sign as he cheered me up. My old self would have grumbled and complained, saying, So you enjoy watching me get persecuted? Or, why does nothing ever go my way? But that day, I was filled with hope for my reward in heaven. And I was so happy that my husband and son were beside me. That was the moment I realized exactly how to live before the Lord. I already had everything I need. All I needed to do now was to save souls for the Lord. This was my true purpose in life. Amen. I used to always complain and grumble because I thought my life was lacking. But now, I am more than satisfied and happy living with Jesus as my Lord. Amen. I give all the glory to the risen Lord who gave me true satisfaction and peace, and who lets me live in this world with hope. Thank you.